Hallelujah. Praise God. Let's wave our hands to him this morning. Let's wave our hands to him this morning. Let's praise him. Let's adore him. Let's magnify his holy name. He's faithful. He's merciful. He's worthy to be praised. Father, we praise you this morning. Say, Holy Spirit, you are welcome. Holy Spirit, please teach us again your word this morning. In the precious name of Jesus. In Jesus' precious name. Father, we thank you. The keeper of Landmark University, we thank you. Thank you for your mercies. Thank you for your grace. We ask that you touch us by your word again this morning. And let your name be glorified in every life. Thank you, Father, for hearing us. In Jesus' precious name. Amen. My case is different. What affects others is not permitted to affect me. Congratulations. Please be seated in God's presence. This morning, I appreciate the Vice Chancellor, Landmark University. For this privilege, I recognize the presence of the Registrar Landmark University. I recognize all members of management present. And of course, I celebrate God for every king and queen who made it into this place, who didn't use the rain as an excuse. <laughs> Praise God. Hallelujah. Very quickly this morning. By the grace of God, I'll be taking the third part of our teaching series for this month. Godliness, covenant gateway to all round breakthroughs. We know already, we've been taught, that godliness engenders greatness. If one is godly, Greatness is a major result. In Genesis chapter 17, verse 6 to 9. Genesis 17, 6 to 9. God was speaking to Abraham. He says, Studio, are you there? I will make thee exceedingly great, exceedingly fruitful, and I will make nations of thee, and kings shall come out of you. He said, I will establish my covenant between me and thee, and thy seed after thee in their generations for an everlasting covenant to be a God unto thee and to thy seed after thee. Hallelujah. And in chapter 22 of Genesis, again, verse 17 to 18, God was speaking again to Abraham. He said, in blessing, I will bless thee. In multiplying, I will multiply thy seed as the stars of the heaven. You remember that at the beginning of Abraham's walk, with God in Genesis chapter 12 when God called him out he said I will make of thee a great nation I will bless thee and make thy name great and the, now you know already out of the mouth of two or three witnesses every matter shall be established it is established already if God calls a man it is unto greatness if God walks with a man, it is unto greatness. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There is something embedded in the blessing that makes any man that contacts the blessing great. Um, you must have observed that 
members of staff who are here, you must have observed that sometimes you are driving by the roundabout. Some people may just be greeting you sometimes. And if you are not careful, you may not understand what they are saying. They just say, bless you. They say, bless you. What they are actually trying to say is that, please give me a lift. You know, and people have actually uh, taken the word bless you to be something that they play with. So, if someone is there, say bless you. If you meet someone at the end, you can ask. People who stay there ask. If you say, what are you waiting for? They say, I'm waiting for bless you. You know, um, you know, there are words that have been, that, that, no, there are statements that have been sources of blessings to us, those who know the meaning. You know, some people, you know, the way they say it is well. You know they're actually laughing. You know they're not serious. It is well, it is well. You know. One of the greatest types of prayer that someone can pray for you is God bless you there is something inside the blessing there is something inside see Abraham transferred that blessing to Isaac Abraham he transferred that blessing when God blessed him he, he, he caught the blessing he absorbed the blessing he transferred it to Isaac because Isaac was the main person that was taking it, uh, you know, Ishmael was not, you know, really in the picture. So there, there wasn't much fight, so to say, about oh, who wants to get the blessing. But when you look at when Jacob and Esau were contesting for the blessing, then it will make you know that there is something inside the blessing. Hallelujah. There is something inside that blessing. Ah. You know, <laughs> Isaac called Esau. He said, please go and make me a venison. So go to the field, make me a venison that I may eat, that my soul may be glad and that I might bless you. You know, you know that's something about you know, there are sources where such blessings come from. Such blessings come from spiritual fathers. Such blessings come from earthly fathers. Hallelujah. You know, and that's one of the reasons why uh, one should be careful the way one relates with parents. With parents. You know, maybe your dad just said, go and do this, and you begin to murmur. And as the person is murmuring, you know, the person doesn't know that something is being removed from the person's lifespan. Because the Bible says, honor your father and your mother. There is a blessing inside. That your days may be long. There is longevity in honoring one's parents. When they were fighting for that blessing, you will understand that there is something there. Jacob, through the help of his mother, quickly went there and pretended to be Esau. And got the blessing. The father was actually hesitating. Should I bless him? Asked him to come near. Touch the. You can imagine how old he was. He didn't even know that he was the fur of an animal he was touching. He said, Airy. Okay. And blessed him. You know. And, but what I want to point our attention to is that when he blessed him, and Esau later came, uh, Esau was angry. And he asked his father, he said, don't you have another blessing? He said, bless me also. Bless me also. And uh, Isaac began to make some dangerous statements. He said, I've blessed him already and it, and it will be great. <laughs> he said, it will be great. He said, you will serve him. Ah, you don't see the kind of statement that was. See, after the blessing has gone, what comes out? You mean? <laughs> the blessing already went. He already blessed him. He already transferred that thing to him. But, you know, a lot of people like to blame Esau and say that, oh, uh, sorry, they like, they like to blame Jacob and say Jacob was a crooked man. Jacob, so crooked. Why would he go and take the blessing that was not supposed to be his? But Jacob was actually acting 
according to a previous transaction. You know, he didn't just go for the blessing. Before he went for the blessing, he went for the bat right. He said, sell me your bat right. He said, give it to me. I will give you porridge. I will give you porridge. And Esau made a statement. He said, what is bat right to me? When I'm almost dying of hunger, can hunger kill him? He said, what is bat right to me? There is something inside your bat right. Don't ever throw it away. A lot of people saying, what, say things like, what is, what is in this salvation that they are talking about? What do I want to do with a strong relationship with Jesus? You don't know that it carries a lot of blessings. So Esau already traded with it. The Bible says he sought it with tears. He sought it with tears. He wanted to be, he wanted to get that bat right back. He wanted to, he wanted to get the blessing, but it was too late. You know, sometimes you have some things around you, you just realize that there are privileges to touch what you should not touch. And you don't know that it's actually a transaction. It's a transaction to collect that glorious thing that you are carrying. To collect that blessing from you. Because if you trade the bat right, you have traded the blessing. If you trade the bat right, you have traded the blessing. There is something inside the blessing that you, you must never play with. Never you play with it. Never you play with it. For you to see what the blessing can do. Out of all the children of Jacob, he was one of them that really exhibited this blessing very well. His name was Joseph. Joseph. You can see his story in Genesis chapter 39, Genesis chapter 41. Joseph. He was, he was not an ordinary child. When he got to Potiphar's house, when he got there, the Lord began to bless everything that Potiphar was doing. And the man was wise enough. He saw it. He saw it. You know, there are things that are happening in your life already because of the blessing that you carry. Because of that blessing that has entered your life. I was speaking with someone yesterday. Some, the person knew. He said, there is this particular thing that I do. And it is that thing that is affecting. You know, see, there is, you can't be involving yourself in some things and carry, and carry the manifestation of the blessing at the same time. So there is a need for us to check ourselves and say, is there anything moving in my life that wants to contaminate my blessing? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Because by that blessing, greatness is supposed to come to you. In fact, greatness is already around you. It's already flowing from inside out by that blessing. By that blessing. It was the same Job that feared God that became the greatest in the East. <laughs> the same Job. Hallelujah. And you can't be godly and not carry fresh unction. Fresh unction. Fresh power. Because of your connection. Because of your connectivity. Because greatness is sure for anyone that is godly, and the devil doesn't want anybody to assess that kind of greatness. There are forces that try to contend with our godliness. Forces. They don't want us to be godly. What are those forces of godliness? Or of, of ungodliness? Number one. The spirit of covetousness. The spirit of covetousness. The spirit of covetousness. What is covetousness? A very intense desire to take or have what does not belong to you, actually. Covetousness, covetousness. And for you to know that it's a spirit, some people that you don't expect to be covetous are covetous. I'm sure you have heard the story of someone whose father bought laptop for him and bought for his friend. 
Then in that same university, he ended up stealing laptop. It's a spirit. It's a spirit. Luke chapter 12, verse 15 says, Beware of covetousness. Beware. 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 For a man's life does not consist in the abundance of the things which he possesses. Your, 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 your nature, your excellence, your greatness is not actually measured by what you possess on the outside. That blessing on the inside is greater than whatever you see on the outside. See, man's life does not consist in the abundance of the things which he possesses. He said, beware. Be- in case you don't know, beware. Beware. I was telling the 111 and 211 students on Tuesday that, you know, I thought I was a contented human being until recently I listened to a message by God's servant, the chancellor. I thought I was living a contented life until I listened to that message again. You know, some years ago I was reading about him, he was saying that whatsoever God cannot give me, may I never have it. That statement is very heavy. I don't know if you know the meaning. Very heavy. Very powerful. But the truth is, those things that people are running after today, doesn't the chancellor have them? <laughs> I was listening to that message and he touched me. He said, the same shoe that he was using. He, he said, he will just see the shoemakers. Help me package it. Help me repackage it. The same shoes. He says sometimes it's the same suit. It's not the shirt that is changing. And people will say, and people, he was saying it in that message. And people will say to him, Brother David, this is nice. <laughs> you know, it's good you are hearing what you are hearing now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. <laughs> Hallelujah. You know. You know, I thought I was contented actually. Because actually, there are some things that I don't run after. I was telling them as well. I said, some, some suits that I wear, is my wife that just go angry and say, you must buy this one now. So sometimes she may even have my ATM. No, she can I, 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 I told her, see, the first BlackBerry phone I used, Bolt 5, I love that phone. My trust application, that's uh, fellowship something. I sent everything on that phone. Very useful phone. But I wasn't looking for anything like that. I was using one Nokia phone like this. I was satisfied. It was very good. Nokia, I don't know the number, but it was just straight like this. Do you understand? I was okay with it until she just bought me that Blackberry. I said, what? Then I saw that. <laughs> Blackberry is better. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. But we've seen greater dimension of, I don't know, I don't, I, I've not seen someone, it's not because I'm talking on this platform. I've not seen many people that are as contented as God's servant. I've not seen. That's the truth. I've not seen. It's not because I'm here. That's the truth. I've not seen many people. Someone who told us that, okay, he's on white suit. So nobody can know if he's a different white suit. It doesn't matter. If you get to that level, will you be thinking like that? Oh, you are shaking your head. I thought you would pray that go. <laughs> Praise God. Contentment. You know, it's possible for you now to be, you know, thank God the, the royal laws don't allow students to bring their cars from home. Because I know the thoughts of. You just want to, you know, roll that car, pack it beside your lecturer and say, sir, do you like this one? <laughs> one of the reasons why some of you are not happy that you are not using phones is because, ah, 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 this kind of, I should now drop it.
And because you see someone using one heavy phone like that, you begin to desire. So it's not yours, it's not time. You will still buy phones for people. You buy laptops for people. You will have a list of people under your scholarship scheme. You, the same you. Go and write it down. Write today's date down. You give people scholarships. I had a, I had about a pastor. I won't mention his name. <laughs> that he didn't like the kind of car his assistant pastor was using. And he was telling, he said, I don't like this car. I don't like this car. The assistant pastor was just living a contented life and kept parking the car there. Then one day he got to that church and a particular car was parked there. And he went and told the senior pastor. He said, sir, someone is parking at my space. Then it looks as if I can't hide what I'm saying. <laughs> Don't look at it. Said, ah, it looks as if someone is parking there. Then the pastor threw a car key at him. He said, That's your car. <laughs> Don't you like that? <laughs> Praise God. Praise God. Without stress, without stealing, without doing anything evil, good things will rush into your hands in the name of Jesus. For the Bible says, Thou, O Lord, will bless the righteous and with favor encompass him about as with a shield. In the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, I speak into the life of everyone embracing contentment this morning that good things will begin to rush towards you from all corners in the name of Jesus Christ. The spirit of covetousness. In 2 Kings chapter 5, verse 20 to 27. 2 Kings chapter 5, verse 20 to 27. Geazi, the servant of Elisha, the man of God, said, Behold, my master has spared Naaman, the Syrian, in not receiving at his hand that which he brought. But as the Lord liveth, I will run after him and take somewhat of him. He said in his heart, I will beware what goes on in your heart. I will run after him. You know, so Gehazi followed after Naaman and when Naaman saw him running after him, he lighted down from the chariot to meet him and said, is all well? Why are you running like this? And in 22 he said, all is well. My master had sent me. Hey, you know we talked about lying spirit earlier. Saying, behold, even now there be come to me ha, from Mount Ephraim two young men of this, see the way he was manufacturing it. The way he was manufacturing it. The way some of you just come up and say, sir, you call your parents. He said, there are two types of excursions we are going for. The first one is at the program level. Then the second one is at the unit level. Each one is 15,000 naira. So the first one, which is the only one you go. The second one. He just told the lie and he was not even showing. You know, if a normal person, a normal Christian, tells a lie, something will choke him inside. Say, oh, no, 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 no. No, no. Uh, if a correct Christian tells you that I kept a bottle under the table, if after he told you, if he remembers that, he looks as if he's on the table, he will come by and say, I'm not sure. He looks as if he's, he will not be okay until he has. But that was not gay, has it? And the man gave him, please put that scripture back on the screen. The man gave him, you know, I pray the talent of silver, two changes of raiment. The man had more than that. Verse 23. And Naaman said, be content, take two talents. And he urged him and bound two talents of silver in two bags with two changes of raiment and laid them upon two of his servants. Uh-uh. Gehazi was not a big man. Servants were carrying loads in front of him. He was following them. And they bear them before him. 
Hey. And when they came to the tower, he took them from their hand and bestowed them in the house. <laughs> and he, left, he let the men go and they departed. And in verse 24, 5, you would think nothing has happened. But he went in and stood before his master. And Elisha said unto him, Whence comest thou Gehazi? And he said, Thy servant went nowhere. And, you know, and I pray that God will give you this kind of eyes that Elijah had. He said, and he said unto him, went not my heart with thee. Hey, when the man turned again from his chariot to meet thee, is it a time to receive money? Hey, that statement struck a chord. He said, is it a time? to? In other words, there will be time to receive he said, is it a time? It's not, it's not as if there will, if there will not come a time. It's just that the time had not come. To receive money and to receive garments and olive yards and vine yards and sheep and oxen and men servant and maid servant. Is it a time? The leprosy therefore of Laman shall cleave unto thee and unto thy seed forever. And he went out from his presence a leper as white as snow sir this was the man that was supposed to carry the double portion of the anointing on elisha hey, elisha got it from elijah elisha was supposed to transfer it to someone but Gehazi messed up there is something you are meant to carry there is an anointing you are meant to deliver to your generation may covetousness not snatch it away from you in the name of Jesus Christ. He messed up. He missed it. Elisha, because of that, went with the anointing to the grave. When Elisha was in the grave, a certain day came. They were burying a man. They dropped the man in the graveyard. As soon as they dropped the man there, the man jumped up. He said, this anointing is too much. I can't stay here. He began to run after them. Ah! Can you imagine the kind of anointing that Gehazi missed? He missed it. You will not miss it. Raise your right hand. Somebody pray in the Holy Ghost for one minute. Say, Lord, I will not miss it. I will not miss it, Lord. I won't miss it. I will not 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 miss it. In Jesus' precious name. Amen. You won't miss it. I won't miss it. <laughs> Number two of the forces of ungodliness. Some things that men do, they just find themselves doing those things. Not that they just want to do them. Number two, the spirit of rebellion. The spirit of rebellion. They say, come, say I will not come. Head of program says, move, say I will not move. Don't you know my level? Don't you know my rank? Don't you know who I am? Let your say, stand up. You say, I don't feel like. Someone stands in front of the, micro uh, in front of the altar holding a microphone. Say, please, let everybody rise on their feet. You say, it's not a hundred level. The registrar makes an announcement and says, okay, so, so things should happen among the students. Registrar DSA, they're talking, say, say, no, no. Say, no, they're just saying their own. The vice chancellor is giving an instruction. You are looking for 1,001 reasons why what the VC said should not be carried out. Rebellion. 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 God is saying something to you. You are saying, no, Lord. No, no. No. It is the spirit of rebellion that brings about disobedience. Disobedience. And in 1 Samuel, 
chapter 15, verse 20 to 29. It was 20 to 23. Let's just read 20 to 23. And Saul said unto Samuel, Yea, I have obeyed the voice of the Lord, and have gone the way which the Lord sent me, and have brought Agag, the king of Amalek, and have utterly destroyed the Amalekites. Is that true? But the people, hey, you are going to get to a point in your life where you will stand in between the correct instruction and the wish of the people. You know, so the, the instruction is there. This is what you're supposed to do. And another thing is that by the side, what the people want you to do. There is the right instruction and then there is what the people want you to do. And God will be watching. What step will you take? He said, but the people, but the people, people that are void of the spirit of rebellion, they don't care what people say. That's one thing that I respect it tomorrow and I'm still craving for that kind of spirit of obedience. In God's servant, how can someone be pastoring a church and the church has broken through in Kaduna? Great church. And big Someone asked them, what have you come to do? He said, I've come to take over. And they were actually taking over. And he was bathing and an instruction came. He said, arise, get it to Lagos and raise me a people. Let me ask you a question. If you are the one, what will you do? You have pastors under you now. What will you do? You say, uh, a pastor, I don't want to mention any name. So that. So that, so that I won't be mentioning the name of my superiors anyhow. <laughs> pastor, so, um, then Pastor B. Pastor A, Pastor B. Um, tomorrow morning, first flight, we are going to Lagos. The Lord has given us an instruction. He said, he said we should get down to Lagos and raise him a people. So I'm sending you there. Please, this instruction came from God. Take it seriously. I can't leave this kind of congregation under you. What will you be teaching them? So, go. So, you know, if God servant did that, we wouldn't be here today. So, he left that bigger church, so to say, in the care of the assistant, or in the care of someone, one of the pastors, and went to start You know, the challenge is we're always looking at the physical. And a voice was coming into my heart this morning that we walk by faith, not by sight. When we walk by faith, it will be easier to obey. From Rajoba, when the place blew again, and people were climbing on trees, people were upstairs, people were just, it was, we had never seen that kind before. At that time, the instruction to move to Canaan land came. You know the story. Now, moving to, moving to Canaan land would have been easier if God said, let some people remain there. So that. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know if you want to pray for grace. To obey. You know what? I, no, to leave that place and say, I've gone. If you're interested, follow me. So some just I want to just I mean I want to pray for like 10 seconds and say, Lord, give me grace for unwavering obedience to you. Father, impart me with grace for unwavering obedience in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. And if you read that uh, scripture forward, first Samuel chapter 15, it said, But the people took of the things which should have been utterly destroyed to sacrifice unto the Lord thy God in Gilgal. They wanted to sacrifice to God. And someone said, had the Lord great delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices as in obeying the voice of the Lord, behold, to obey is better than sacrifice, to hearken than the fat of rams. I was in a TMC class and I was asking some of my friends, I said, if you get a job, they said, this job, 
you will be producing tobacco for people to smoke. And you will be paid in millions of dollars. Will you take it? There was noise everywhere. They, you, you are here now. There was noise everywhere. Ha. One of them was vibrating. Say, what? what? Say, what? In millions of dollars. Then I told them of the time when I began to take marriage seriously. Say, I must marry you. Then one of my friends, long, long ago, I just went and visited, you know, just to, you know, just to, you know. Then as we were discussing, we were just discussing. And then, so, okay, so where are you working now? The person mentioned the place. What they were doing was producing tobacco. That was the last day I saw the person. Till today. What? As you are seated, I want to ask you, what job will you... Someone, someone will say, I'll go and take the job, then I'll pay the tithe. See, what that scripture is saying is that God is not looking for the tithe. He said to obey is better than what? Sacrifice. Hallelujah. Very quickly, because of our time, how to overcome ungodliness? Number one, keep a right company. Keep a right company. Proverbs chapter 13 verse 20 says, He that walketh with the wise will be, but the companion of fools shall be destroyed. In 2 Samuel chapter 13, the son of David, Amnon, had a friend called Jonadab. Amnon had an inordinate desire for his blood. He didn't know how to go about it. It was his friend that told him. I don't know if you have seen people who don't actually go into exam or with microchip. But they tell people, their mouths are very big. Come on. Just put it there. Nobody will see you. And they are not doing it. And they are pushing someone else. They are Jonadabs. Because Amnon, after he committed that atrocity, was later killed. Was Jonadab killed alongside with him? Nobody even mentioned the name of Jonadab. They didn't know he was the mastermind. Keep right company. First Corinthians chapter 15, verse 33. Do not be deceived. Because some people feel that, no, 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 it doesn't matter. Do not be deceived. Bad company corrupts good manners. Someone said, it's evil communication. Why did you say bad company? You can't have bad company and not receive evil communication. Something will flow. Keep right company. Bishop Abiyo gave an illustration one day and said, if you are in the midst of a crowd and every, you are in the midst of a crowd and everybody is moving in this direction, unconsciously, where will you be moving towards? Even when you don't want to move, someone will push you. you know, in the midst of the right company. Hallelujah. Keep right on. Some of you, as you are seated now, it's occurring to you that there are relationships that you should break. You break it. There are people that should not be seen around you. Stop seeing them. By the time you stop seeing them, they realize that there is something dangerous that they are doing. Day to day will change. Keep a right company. In just three, you know, I was already... Someone ministered to me, oh, I surrender to Jesus, and, and I was very close to my brother. So there were some things they used to do. They used to play at the gates of the house, you know, with some of his friends, you know. So I would stay with them and would just be gisting. Then I would say, after all, I'm not saying what they are saying, and I'll be consoling myself. I remember those days. They would go for volleyball. I would go inside, praying and fasting. You know, but I, I stayed with them. I said, no, no. I, I, after all, I'm not saying what they are saying. I'm just with them because we were very close. And before long, I began to do what they were doing. It's God that saved me. Only God knows what I would have become. Some of you, you are carrying something good. You are not keeping it among stones. It's dangerous. 
get out of there. Get out of there. No, the, God, God, God brought me out and saved me. One day, at a point, it was a big bed. My brother would sit here, sleep here, I would sleep here. You know, God changed the story. I became, I became someone else. You know, there was a day my brother had a dream that rapture happened. Then, then I used to wake up like 4 a.m. to go and pray between 4 and 6 a.m. or something. So I was already in the sitting room praying. Then he woke up and stretched forth his hand. He didn't see me there. So he quickly came. Then he came to watch. You know, what I'm trying to say is that God saved me. He saved me. He will save you. You know, you have been giving your life to Christ and collecting it back. You have been going, he will save you. In the name of Jesus. How do I overcome all these forces of ungodliness? Number two, put on the armor of light. Romans chapter 13 verse 12. Put on the armor of light. Put on the armor of light. Romans chapter 13 verse 12. Let us put on the armor of light. Let the word of God surround you. If you have told someone not to do this, it will be difficult for you yourself to come and do it. That's putting on the armor of light. It describes evangelism as the preparation of the gospel of peace that prevents you against the ashness of the earth. Hallelujah. Put on the armor of light. Put on the armor of light. Number three. Free from all appearances of evil. Free. Flee. See, there are temptations and there are temptations. Say, flee from all appearance of evil. First Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 22. Flee. You know, flee is a word that is related to fly. Flee means run as if you are flying. You know, there are temptations that you will see and just say, no, no, I don't want to. You can stay there. But there are some you can't stay there. It's better you leave the area. It's better you leave the area with speed as fast as possible is somebody hearing me if you have been rising and falling into one error or the other most likely is because you have been staying in that area where you should not stay flee flee clear off clear off that's one of the methods that's one of the ways by which you can over overcome the forces of ungodliness flee clear off In 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 20, there about that says, Flee also youthful lusts. Flee, 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 run away. Flee. And finally, as we begin to close, what are the benefits of godliness? What are the benefits? If I'm godly, if I run away from all these things, what benefits await me? What are the benefits? Number one, godliness empowers for exploits. You are here on this planet earth to fulfill a purpose. You will fulfill that purpose in the name of Jesus. Godliness empowers for exploits. 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 Daniel chapter 11 verse 32. They that know their God they shall be strong and they shall do exploits. Who are the people that will know their God? The people that, that are pure in heart. For Matthew chapter 5 verse 8 says, Blessed are the pure in heart for they shall see God. They that see God will know God and do, they that know God will be strong and they that are strong will do exploits. Hallelujah. And finally, what are the benefits of godliness it guarantees eternity with Christ eternity with Christ Revelation chapter 21 verse 5 to 8 can we read that scripture and he that sat upon the throne said behold I make all things new and he said unto me right for these words are true and faithful verse 6 and he said unto me it is done I am alpha and omega the beginning and the end. I will give unto him that is a thirst of the fountain of the water of life freely. Verse 7. He that overcometh, somebody say I will overcome. He that overcometh shall inherit all things 
and I will be his God and he shall be my son. Verse 8. Verse 8, please. But the fearful mm, and unbelieving. So unbelief is a sin. Unbelief is a sin. Can you speak into the air? Speak into the air. Now say, I believe. I be I'm a believer. I'm a believer. There is no space for fear in me. He has not given me the spirit of fear, but of power, of love, and of sound mind. I'm a believer. He said, but the fearful, the unbelieving, abominable, the abominable, the murderers, the warmongers. We heard about the spirit of wardom last week. The warmongers, the sorcerers, the idolaters, all liars. One student that looked, to, looked at me before and said, ah, it's not possible for someone to exist and not tell lies. Ha. You know, it's possible. It's possible. You therefore must be perfect as your heavenly father is. If you have said something and it's not looking like it, go back there and say, it looks as if that thing I said, this is how it is. Or, and, he said, and all liars shall have their part where? In the lake of a witch bonnet with fire and brimstone, which is the second death, was describing what's going to happen. Now the question is, Let's assume that someone just whispered to you that he had on CNN that um, they say rapture happened. What will come to your mind? It's not that they say it will happen next year, it has happened. What will come to your mind? If you are a righteous person, you say no. He said, if it has happened, I would have gone. <laughs> you say, if it has happened, I would have gone. Please rise on your feet with me and just say a word of prayer to God. Say, Lord, and grace me to live a life of godliness. And grace me. And grace me. And grace me. Are you praying this morning? Say, Lord, and grace me. Thank you, Most High God. In Jesus' precious name. You are here this morning. All eyes closed. You are here this morning. You know you need Jesus. You know you need him to help you. You, you are making up your mind. Say, all these forces, they have been disturbing me. I must live right. And you want divine help. Can you raise your hand above your head? You know you need to make it straight with Jesus. Can you raise your hand? I want to pray with you. Anybody like that? Please raise your hand. Raise your hand to heaven. Just It's not to man, it's to God. Raise it to God. Say, Lord, there is someone here who needs the help of heaven. Are you raising that hand? I want you to raise it. Raise it. Shoot it up. All eyes closed. Shoot it up. Shoot it up. Say, Lord, I need your help. God bless that hand. Say, Lord, I need your help. Lord, I need your help. You, you, it's not in your place to be looking around and say, who is that one raising his hand? Your own is to raise it if you need help. Say, Lord, I must be delivered from these forces of ungodliness. Are you raising that hand? Say, Lord, help me. Lord, help me. Lord, help me. You are raising your hand. Put your hand on your chest. And say, Lord, help me. Put, raise the other one. Put the other one on your chest. Say, Lord, help me. Lord, help me. In the name of Jesus, Lord, deliver me today. Deliver me this morning in the name of Jesus Christ. You are delivered. You are set free. You are blessed in the name of Jesus Christ. I want you to speak just before we close this morning and say from now henceforth, I'm not under the influence of any spirit of ungodliness because the spirit of God is working in me. I'm living the kind of life I should be living in. The righteousness of Jesus is in me. I am blessed. I am blessed. I'm saved. Covetousness is not in me. Rebellion is not in me. I'm obedient to the call. I'm baptized afresh with the spirit of obedience. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' precious name. Amen. You are blessed. Your academics is blessed. Everything that pertains to your life is blessed. In the name of Jesus. 
it is well with you. Surely, God's goodness and mercies are following us all the days of our lives, and we shall join the presence of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Peace. My case is different because I'm redeemed of the Lord and as a covenant child. What affects others is not permitted to affect me. Congratulations.